So during the American Revolution, the Americans and the French were heavily armed with the 1700s era Charlieville, 69 caliber smoothbore French military musket. So you'll see 1765, 1777, all minor iterations on essentially the same musket. Well, those were used heavily in the American Revolution, then second lined off to militia forces as the Americans started manufacturing their own version of the Charlieville, the 1795 Springfield. Again, same exact gun, just made in the States domestically, 69 caliber, smoothbore musket. Well, as those got second lined out and then the militia landed up second lining those out, these became really common on the frontier, or what was the frontier then. And so as a result, many of them landed up being used by the indigenous peoples. Uh, this one I acquired at Two Bears Trading Post in Ruidoso, New Mexico. And what an amazing shop. If you're in the area, go check it out. So what you'll see with an Indian trade musket is a lot of modifications that really made the gun a better gun. First of all, it's shorter. Real Charlieville is super long. It's a pike. Much harder to aim because with black powder, there's duration of time for the projectile to make it down the bore and much easier to actually shift your shot and miss. Shorter is actually better in that regard. It actually increases, I think it makes it easier to hit with. Um, other things that matter is uh, there's, of course, tack work on this. Amazing, beautiful, aesthetic tack work. Does it, of course, improve the function of the rifle? No, but man, it personalizes it, makes it yours. And if you know your musket, you want to identify your musket because picking up someone else's musket, you may not know exactly where that aims or how to hit with it. Got some 69 caliber paper cartridges. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a whirl at this target at 50 yards. Filling the pan with powder. Close that frizzin. Nice strong spring on that, I gotta say. Rest of the powder down the bore. And then ram the whole thing home. This being much shorter length is super more convenient than a as issued Charlieville length, or for that matter, 17995 Springfield musket. Let's see how this goes. Ooh, a little high and right. All right, you have to learn these guns. They all function a little differently. Let's give it another whirl. That's one of the things about these older guns. Like, if you pick up a modern AR-15, as long as the sights are regulated, you don't really need to worry about it. You aim and shoot and hit. But these things all have their own personality. And what you got to learn is what the personality of your particular musket is. There's no rear sight, so there's no like rear aiming index. You have like a front post, almost like a barley corn really. And once you learn how to shoot your gun, you want to stick with your gun, your musket, because you'll understand your musket. Pick up another one, you might not know how that one functions or behaves or its little idiosyncrasies. Here we go. There we go. Second shot I'm hitting. Let's do one more for fun. So, how this works. Paper cartridges. You could load from just a horn and measure and powder and ball, but paper cartridges are the best way. Tear off the end. Fill the pan with some powder. That's your primer. Close the frizzin. Hammer at half cock. Pour the rest of the powder down the bore. Make sure it's not wedged up too much. Seat the ball, take your ramrod, and then ram it all the way home. No air gap allowed, because that would be dangerous. Need it on my foot here, let's see. There we go. You can hear that going home. Make sure it's nice and tight. Reseat your ramrod. All right, cock the hammer, aim, and fire. There we go. Nice reliable hits. Because what a beautiful gun and how often do you get to shoot something like this. And then uh, we'll have some closing thoughts and ideas. As you see there's no speed in this. I mean they say that a, a very trained person could do three rounds a minute. find that to be quite the claim. 
Uh, possible, I guess, but quite a challenge. But still, what an amazing, beautiful piece of history. And fun to shoot. Quite honestly, some of this stuff is more fun than modern guns. The um, modern guns bring their own thing to the table, right? Of course. But shooting history like this makes you a better marksman because they're harder to use. And you just kind of feel the, feel the power, the magic, every time you get to pull the trigger. Nice. Kind of getting this gun figured out. Well, I'm sure there'll be more of this gun on the channel in the future. But what I want to say is, first of all, thank you to Mark, or Two Bears, at the Two Bears Trading Post, and his wife Barbara. They were amazing hosts, and what a beautiful shop. If you're in Rio Doso, Mexico, New Mexico, check it out. You might find something like this there. Uh, no sponsorship there, just really like the shop and the people. But uh, on top of that, what I want to say is, this was purchased through Patreon funds, and you will see more of this on the channel, for sure. And I want to thank all of you out there in the audience for, that support InRange via Patreon. There's no sponsors, no overlords, no corporate masters, demonetized proactively. The only reason InRange still exists and is alive is because of viewers like you keeping InRange alive at patreon.com slash InRangeTV. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this kind of historic content and firearm. If you can't totally understand, another thing you could do to help us out is fight the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel. We're on multiple different distribution points. Not just YouTube, but more importantly, subscribe. Yes, like, and share with your friends. Um, sharing with your friends helps us defeat the algorithm because it means that we get an organic algorithm in viewers like you helping promote content like this. And if you'd like, leave a comment below too. That helps too. Hey all, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you soon.